Hey team, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at a post from r slash engineering students titled, I never imagined engineering would be like this. Oh, by the way, still over 90% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't really do anything for you, but it helps me out a lot. So thanks if you do that. I'm doing an internship at a factory and all we do is this. In the morning, we walk around the site and take notes on what the workers are doing. Then we go to the office, have a short meeting that lasts about 10 to 15 minutes, and after that, we just chat with the other interns. Lunchtime comes, we eat, then we come back, walk around the site again, observe the operations, and take notes on which task the workers are doing. After that, we go back to the office and enter the workers' working hours and task into Excel. We also track the status of orders. Isn't it strange? I thought my internship would be much more intense, but this is literally all we do. From time to time, we walk around the site, and the rest of the time we eat, drink tea, and chat. Don't you think they should actually make us work? I want to do welding. I want to do assembly. I want to operate the press, but they keep telling us it's too dangerous for us. Gosh, engineering is so boring. I think a lot of people have the brochure version of engineering in their head. When people are getting into engineering, they're looking at all the glamorous parts, all the showy parts, all the things that would make you interested in the thing, because that's what got you interested. But with anything in life, once you actually get involved in something, you start seeing how all of the parts of it work. And in engineering, and I'm sure in a lot of other things, it's not the stuff you see in a brochure. It's the actuality of the thing. And so yes, do engineers do cool stuff? Of course. But there's a lot of boring stuff you have to do to get that cool stuff to happen. Now, should it be this boring? Like, this guy's not allowed to do anything. Well, there's also the added layer of the fact that you're an intern. This doesn't mean that interns don't get to do anything, but like you said at the end of your post, they tell you that it's too dangerous for you, all these interesting things you wanna do. And sure, are you probably responsible enough to be able to do those things? Yeah, but they become liable. I think it's too big of a risk to take on to let your interns do this kind of stuff. Because like I said, yeah, 99% of the time, it's probably gonna go right, right? But as an engineer, you should know that you gotta prepare for the 1% of the time, which is something going bad. And so they've eliminated the chance of something going bad by just telling the interns, ah, no, that's, that's too dangerous. We're not gonna let you anywhere near that. It's not that you're not capable. It's not that there's not people doing that stuff. It's that they can't let interns do that. Probably, that's my best guess. But is this the reality? Is all this logistical nonsense all engineering really is? Well, it's a majority of it, depending on the field you go into. I can say from the computer world, right? I work with computer engineers, software engineers. I'm an electrical engineer myself. There is a lot of this work you have to do that's not entirely hands-on. And you know, engineers are the ones that get credit with building stuff. So how are they not the ones using their hands to build stuff? doesn't make any sense. But that's because building stuff takes such a small time. I don't know if you did programming classes in college, but when I did programming classes in college, the one big takeaway I got from it was that you spent a lot of time planning what to do rather than actually doing it. Like the compile and run button is just one button click and that's it. But all the pseudocode, all the lines of code you have to write, that all takes forever so that eventually you can just click one button and make it all happen. In your case, it's not entirely pseudocode. It's not entirely writing code, but it's doing all this stuff, which is like, oh yeah, go out in the field, take a count of what's happening, come back, rest a little bit, then take account of more things that are happening. Is this all the engineering is? No, you could also just work for a very boring place. <laughs> that is entirely possible, yeah. But I think, you know, talking to a lot other engineers that are relatively new into the industry, like I've only been working full time for three years now, I think something I'm seeing across the board for people my age, you know, fresh college grads, is that yeah, engineering isn't as exciting as they advertised it to be like they did in the brochures. But were they really advertising it in the brochures like that? Or was that just some idea we came up with to convince ourselves? I don't know. There's probably a whole debate in that conversation that I don't need to get into, but that could also explain it. So you ask, isn't it strange? You also ask, don't you think they should actually make us work? But it's not that strange. And all this stuff you have to do is work. It's just the boring work. I mean, I remember my first internship in the tech world was just being an inventory guy. 
I sat in a windowless lab all day. And anytime an engineer needed a cable or an adapter or something, they would come to me and be like, hey, I need this. Do you have it back there? And be like, well, let me check. And then I go do it. That's not interesting, <laughs> but I had a role to play and I played it so that someone doing the interesting stuff could do their job. What you probably have to do is find one of those very personable people doing the real job and try to cozy up to them and be like, hey, uh, I noticed that you're doing that stuff. Could I maybe shadow you or like take a look while you do that stuff? It'd be really interesting to me. And then yeah, if they're cool like that, they'll be like, oh yeah, you can tag along, come with me. But generally for interns, you guys are gonna do a very, you know, specific thing for a specific time. It's hard to make that fairly interesting. But I am fairly interested in seeing what other people have to say. So let's take a look at the comments, see what they say. How long have you been in the internship? If you just started, they might just be showing you around first. And then OP responds and says, one week has passed. And I've learned a lot in theory, but practically we haven't learned anything. Let's see if I'll gain any hands-on experience in the remaining three weeks. That's crazy. So th <laughs> this guy's been on the job for five business days as an intern. And he's like, this shit is boring. What? <laughs> oh, what do you mean? What do you <laughs> it hasn't had time to be interesting yet. When you get started day one, it's not like you're going to do like every interesting thing right off the rip. Now giving them the benefit of the doubt, you know, maybe it's still not as interesting as they thought it'd be. You know, maybe they expected it to be boring, but just not that boring. Well then, yeah, sure, that makes sense. But a week? What are we talking about? <laughs> you do the legwork for the main engineer. Time studies, work instructions, data collection, etc. That's what all internships and entry levels position are for most mechanical slash process engineering. It's boring as fuck. It's a scam. Some will lie to you at the interview promising you'll learn new things and participate in good projects. But nah, that's why I left a long time ago. I mean, I don't know if it's exactly a scam. You're pretty much getting exactly what you were promised. It's probably said in some very superfluous words, right? They probably said, oh yeah, help manage um, systems and um, engineering uh, data strategy. And you're like, oh yeah, that's that's that Iron Man shit. But no, that's that's that Excel shit. That's that Microsoft suite shit right there. <laughs> I feel you as a new process engineer. I'd rather be doing assembly worker stuff. I'm just looking busy most of the time or writing work instructions. But hey, at the end of the day, I get paid good. Yeah, that's that part you're not supposed to say out loud, but a lot of engineers, right? They're just looking busy most of the time or... <laughs> Just doing some basic stuff. That's why people are really scared nowadays about AI. Because a lot of the stuff that they have engineers do is pretty basic. If you just kind of write a script and give it to a robot, it can probably do it pretty well. <laughs> now, because of legal reasons, right? You probably always need a human involved. Like even when you do fully start using AI, you need a person to get in there so they can sign it so that the company is not, you know, just screwing themselves like if ai does something and just sends it out well that's now you're open to a lot of legal problems right so you need the guy sitting there with his name badge and his name on the cubicle being like uh, what did the robot do yep looks good to me i'll sign it with my human pen <laughs> is this what engineering is by and large no you got the shit work that your boss thought was boring as fuck and since you're only there for four weeks it's too expensive i.e literally not worth his time to train you on any task that requires a stronger brain than a chimpanzee. Get a longer internship somewhere that provides value and you will learn actual practical engineering skills. The interns at my work typically reach a level on par with an entry level employee by the time they are done. And we keep them around for a minimum of six months because they have complex tasks. If we didn't, it wouldn't be worth my time to train them how to do anything I need them to do. Because they have complex training period is like three months or so until I'm comfortable letting them operate a workstation solo. Yeah, that is kind of a thing. You know, maybe a company won't invest entirely into you if they don't see a long-term future with you. Like you'll probably be given many more responsibilities if you're like a senior in college and you're trying to parlay that internship into a full-time job rather than you're just like a sophomore that's trying to get a summer gig so he can beef up his resume for when he does become a senior in college. If they know you're just gonna, you know, do the job and dip, then sometimes, you know, they won't invest entirely into you. I would hope, and the idea is, that engineers, good engineers, would invest in you no matter how long you're going to be around. You know, it's just good good practice, I would say. 
But the reality of the situation is there's a job that needs to be done and they're going to try to be most efficient to do it. If that involves not totally taking the time to teach you how to do stuff, then that might be what happens. On paper, the insurance under the company does not cover any accident you might face in work, so you get the safe and boring route. There are absurd moments as well, but very rare to see in internships as you don't stay that long for a project. Yeah, that acknowledges the point about like the company being liable if something happens to you. So that's why they try to minimize that risk as much as they can. Once you become a full-time employee, then they might start putting you in those riskier situations where you may or may not die. Hoping for the second one, of course, obviously. Come on, that goes without saying. And why do I feel the need to say it? Communicate to your manager or higher up that you want to do more actual engineering work. Since it has only been your first week there, that's not too alarming. But if it doesn't change after the second week, definitely ask for a real task. Yeah, you know what? You can never underestimate the value of just asking. If you want to be more involved, if you want to do more interesting things at your engineering job, maybe ask your manager. In a lot of cases, they're just giving you the work that needs to be done. But if they're aware of something you actually have an interest in, even if there's no work available regarding that right now, that might keep their ears open in case any other opportunities arise, and then they'll know, oh yeah, you were interested in that. Maybe I'll throw that over your way. I think a lot of engineers should go into engineering technology and be more hands-on. The myth about engineering is that engineers build things. Engineers mainly design and test. I really think it depends what field, what industry, what company you work for. It's on such a case-by-case -case basis, it's hard to make a generalization being like, oh, all of engineering is or isn't hands-on. But I do agree that I think the idea that gets pushed forward is that, oh yeah, engineers are like builders. They build things, they make things, they engineer things, right? That's the verb. But yeah, it's not too far off to say they mainly design and test things. Which, that's kind of hands-on, is it not? Well, whether or not engineering is hands-on, I know I would love to see your hands on the like button. So make sure you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you in the next one.